while the cheetah are streaming past our vehicle just a few meters away. Look at how beautiful this is. Magic. Still not too much of their favorite food wildebeest in the immediate area, but they are on the move, so that's good prospects. I would love to see these boys back in action. It's been a while since I actually last saw them hunting. I can't even remember when last it was, but it was quite some time. And Craig, if I have, Craig and I have headed across here on what is now the end of a three-night mission in the hope of getting Craig some an opportunity to get some cool cheetah hunting footage. And so far we have failed. So the pressure is on. I feel like I failed because of our morning two mornings ago where we missed out on a lot of good action. Hello to Kaylee. You'd like to know if these boys would get a little bit frisky one another and fight over a lady if they came across one. Sorry, Haley, not Kaylee. And yes, they certainly would. And I would love to see them and what it actually would come down to, how aggressive a fight it would be, who the main two contenders would be. And I'd also like to see what the others do while the winner is actually mating. Do they stay nearby? Another thing that's very, very interesting that I'd never really thought about, to be honest, before I started spending time with Cheetah three months ago, because before coming here, I've never really worked in areas where there've been lots of Cheetah. And Cheetah, only mate at night, which is very interesting. Lion and leopards mate all day, all night. They're not too concerned, whereas cheetah, I'm told, and it makes sense, because when have you ever seen a photograph of cheetah mating? Never. I never have, and I'm sure most of you haven't, but lions and leopards, you commonly see photographs of them. So it'll be very cool to see them mating, how exactly it goes down, if it's much different to lion or leopard. Because that in itself, once the males have had their fights, Ailey, the act of mating for big cats, or most cats, is often quite a painful affair for both the male and the female, so they growl and swat one another. Beautiful. Hello to Aegis, you've asked an interesting question, but a good one because strange things happen out here and it's best we are ready for anything. You would like to know if one of these cheetah hopped up into the vehicle and started purring gently and caressing me, would it be put down? Because it's crossed that kind of human animal boundary. And no, it, it wouldn't be put down. And it actually does happen in the Maasai Mara. Not the purring and caressing, but a female cheetah called Malaika. Let's watch closely here. They might get a little bit frisky with one another, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh. Okay, D'Artagnan, you show them who's boss. <laughs> but we certainly don't know who's boss. They haven't appeared to exactly work that out yet, and it's difficult for us to tell who's who, although it is possible. So please help us with that for any of you who are keen to undertake identifying them. Sorry, back to your question. Um, there's a female cheetah called Malaika, and there have been many, many cheetah in multiple wilderness areas around Africa that have been known to jump onto vehicles to get a good vantage point. Sometimes just the hood of the vehicle and sometimes right on top. And a lot of the vehicles, let's just show the one to our left here, Craig, even though it's a rice rocket, that's the nickname for them, and they're going to walk into frame now. But basically all the vehicles have got hoods that pop up and even the vehicle between the rice rockets and the other green vehicle in the distance you can see the people poking their head out and that means if the, there's a cheetah on top it's like literally right there by their face and even though it's highly unlikely that the cheetah will do anything dangerous it's kind of up to the guides to rather chase the cheetah off rather than letting them do that as tempting as it is for everyone to have a cheetah that close to them I think it's irresponsible of us as humans to allow that to happen. And if sh any of the cheetah kind of started looking up towards the bonnet of our vehicle, I would just tap the side like that and deter them. 
because as much as we love spectating them, I th think it does need to be monitored and not taken too far, because where do you actually draw the line? I worry more about, you know, a silly tourist reaching out and trying to, like, stroke the cheetah, and then the cheetah trying to jump off the slippery vehicle and slipping and breaking its leg when it lands. That would be the disaster that I'm trying to prevent, less so than the threat that the cheetah posed to the humanoids.